Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you, Dulendra. Um, so uh, yes, you all know me now. I'm Shamit. Um, and uh, during this session, we will discuss uh, um, basic steps and best practices, um, the list of best practices that uh, I compiled for you to follow when building pipelines. So uh, before we go into that, uh, is there anyone in the audience who have built pipelines already, who, have, uh, who are running pipelines already, who have pipelined their uh, uh, development processes? Oh, wonderful, super. So you guys can correct me if I say something wrong here. So uh, we'll first go through like uh, why pipelines, the advantages, and uh, uh, advantages of using pipelines, and then we'll go through the uh, seven best practices. And then finally, uh, we'll wrap up the session by discussing how WSO2 can help as a vendor uh, with your pipeline story. So uh, when we are discussing uh, continuous pipelines, uh, it usually has three stages. Uh, the integration stage, delivery stage, and the deployment stage. So usually, any pipeline gets triggered by a code commit. That's the usual practice whenever we are building a pipeline. Uh, usual practice is to trigger that with a code commit. And when the code comes into the pipeline, it straight away goes to the integration phase. And there you have uh, lots of integration tests and lots of tools and technologies integrated together. Uh, and uh, you, basically, that's the uh, test area where you uh, have the choice of uh, running test automation. And after that, the code goes to the delivery stage. That is where you move your code between environments. If you, uh, run your, if you, if you uh, push your code to the dev environment in the delivery phase, it will go to the testing environment. And later, maybe UAT environments and pre-production environments. So uh, in the continuous deployment phase, uh, only you promote your code or your changes into the production. That is where the uh, continuous deployment happens. So when you look at the end-to-end -end pipeline story, that consists of continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment. So the other key aspect is uh, the feedback. So in every phase, it's best to create a feedback channel. So whenever things go wrong, or whenever things start failing during any of these stages, uh, you can easily trace back uh, and uh, uh, get the code fixed and uh, run the pipeline again and again. So why pipelines? So as you all know, pipelines gives us a repeatable and a safer way to deliver software. And pipeline helps us to adopt shift left. Anyone who's familiar with uh, the concept of shift left? Yeah, shift left is a practice where you can detect problems at early stages of the pipeline by moving tasks to the left. That means you don't have to wait till things go wrong at the end of the pipeline. You try, you try to move those tasks to left as much as possible so that you can detect failures early. And obviously, pipelines help you to deliver changes to production in a very fast way. And pi with pipelines, you can integrate a variety of test automation uh, tools and technologies. And it adds visibility. Because now that you have a lined up set of uh, tasks, uh, it's, easier to s it's easier to monitor each task and identify failures and track and trace all the way back to specific commits that, uh, that cause this cause particular failures. And the most important advantage of pipelines is it reduces the flow time by a great deal. So let's talk about flow time uh, in a late, in, you know, as we go on. Um, and uh, I think you, most of you must be familiar with the term uh, cycle time. Flow time is uh, somewhat similar to cycle time, but uh, we can use it in a, uh, in a different, uh, we can give a different definition uh, in the context of pipelines. 
So this is the list of seven things that I uh, compiled for you to follow when building pipelines. First thing is plan, to plan for frequent updates. So when you have lots of applications or services, you need to create multiple pipelines for those. And when you have multiple environments that the change is running across, it becomes more complex. And if you are operating in a cloud environment, then the whole story becomes more dynamic, and uh, you might have to consider, you might, want to, you might not want to basically running all the environments at all times. You might want to bring up environments on demand, destroy environments when you're done with it, likewise. So planning for those ahead, planning for what you want, and uh, planning to how you want to operate pipelines is critical. And now let's look at the flow time. So the usual definition of flow time is the time takes from approving a change to delivering the change to the customer or to production. That's what you usually, uh, usually mean by flow time. It may take days, or some cases it may take hours. In the context of pipelines, we can consider flow time as the time takes when a code comes into the pipeline to promote that code into production. So the goal of us should be try to reduce this flow time as much as possible. And flow time will give you a better understanding. If you, if you measure flow time, it will give you a better understanding of how your pipeline performs. Number two, early adoption of security. So this is, again, comes under shift left. That means you don't have to wait until your changes or your code reaches pre-production or later stages of the pipeline. You can integrate code scans, penetration tests, and, tool, and, and tools like that in very early stages of the pipeline and make sure that the code you push through environments are in an agreement with your or your customers' compliances. Test automation and feedback. So test automation, again, is a very critical thing when building pipelines. When you say test automation, uh, it's automation and uh, top quality and full coverage are three different aspects to consider. So uh, when you have, uh, so this, with these pipelines, we always, even though we have lots of pipelines, we know it's practically impossible to provide 100% coverage uh, with uh, obvious reasons. It could be time constraints when you're in a project. So what, we, so what we usually do is we pick and choose the critical components and critical business flows and try to automate and try to provide coverage uh, to those areas. And we release the code. And later, we come back, revisit, reevaluate based on the cost benefit. And it would be eventually a repetitive effort. Number four, staging before production. So this is one area that I have seen. I have seen many people building pipelines. But one common mistake most of them do is they don't have a production-like environment in their pipeline with production-like data. It's very, it's very serious to run your code through, product, through a production-like environment, as in architecturally production-like, against production-like data. When I say production-like, it should not have to be the ideal data set that you have in production. It can be a simulated data set, but uh, in terms of uh, types and sizes, it should match the production. It, it should uh, be identical to uh, the data that you have in the production environment. So having a production-like environment with production-like data is critical when building pipelines. And advanced deployment strategies. This is, again, something you can use uh, when building pipelines. Because when you want to deliver changes, if you want to bring down an entire setup just to deliver a small change, that's not right. So if you use deployment strategies like Brew Green or Rolling or Canary, you can still deliver changes without causing to the incoming traffic, without causing any downtime. So we have a tutorial session today after tea 
and myself and Lakmal will be talking about these deployment strategies, and we will show you a demo um, during that session. And monitor use experience. It is, again, one thing we do is, even though we have lots of tools and technologies integrated to run different sorts of tests, we most, most of the time we focus on functionality tests, function, how the code functions. But similar to that, it is important because every code line you write is used by a user. And trying to simulate the use activities that a user could perform and see the response time when a, when a user uh, trigger an event, how long would it take to get, get the response back or the performance? These aspects are important as well. So it's not just functional tests or integration tests. You need to pay attention to have some sort of test to simulate user activities and see how your application performs. And this is the most critical thing when you are adopting Agile or building pipelines, the culture. So when you have pipelines or when you go Agile, developers cannot, cannot say, I have written my code, now it's someone else's responsibility to test and deploy. That does not apply when you are in an agile environment and when you have pipelines to take your code all the way to production. So the developers have to own this end-to-end. -end. And developers have to be responsible for writing code, writing tests, executing tests, and deploying code into production. Because when you have pipelines only, you will figure out it does not. In a, in a conventional way, if you try to develop, uh, do the development practices in a conventional way without pipelines, the majority of the time to deliver a change into production takes after finishing the development. Time takes for testing, time takes for setting up infrastructure, time takes to run through multiple environments. But when you have a pipeline, the majority of the time, that shifts. The majority of the, of the time people will be spending on writing code. Because as soon as they commit their code, it will go through the pipeline, and they can get the feedback immediately. So, we, so people who are building pipelines has to cultivate this mind shift change in developers' head, and that's critical. All right. So let's see how WSO2 can help you. WSO2 as a vendor can help you with your pipeline story. So most of you might already know that over the past few years, we delivered software as a binary zip file. When you try to download any WSO2 product off the website, we always gave you a binary zip file. But then we recently started a new initiative to create platform, platform native installers. So now if you visit any of our download page, product download pages, you will see if you, are, if, you are on a Linux, if you are a Linux user, you will see RPMs or DEBs. If you are a Mac user, you will see PKG files. If you are a Windows user, you will see MSI files. And similarly, you will see platform native options as well, like AWS. If you are familiar with AWS, if you are running your setups with AWS, with, single click, with a single click on the website, you will be able to get, you can get a distributed or HAID a product set up on AWS. Similarly, we have provided installation resources for communities, and uh, we also have Puppet and Ansible uh, if, you, if you are using those technologies in your organizations. So we are trying to, we are expanding, creating installers uh, across several other platforms as well, and we want to create, we want to support as many platforms uh, out there uh, so that you, you don't have to invest time on converting WSO2 software uh, to run on whatever the platform that you are, you, are, you are familiar with. So we want to take that burden, and uh, we want to deliver something that is very straightforward. So you can follow, you, can fo you just have to follow like three, four steps and get a fully distributed, fully etched uh, production quality setup. So the other ways, there are several other ways that we, uh, we can help you with uh, your pipeline story. One way is selective updates. 
So all this time, uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you are familiar with uh, WSO2 Update Manager, the WAM service. And we've been giving all the updates that we release uh, through a single channel. But now we, have provided, we are providing two basic channels, the full channel and the security channel. And if you subscribe to security channel, you will receive security updates only through that channel. So if you are happy with the binary GA product that you download off the website, and if you, want to, if you don't want to apply any other updates and want to keep updating your setup with security updates, you can simply subscribe to the security-only channel and receive updates through that. And at the same time, we have created this in-place update tool where, you'd, where you will not end up with an additional zip file with updates. You can update. This is a small binary that resides in, within the bin directory. It will update the existing product, uh, existing product. And it has the channel supports. And the beauty of that tool is if you have uh, configuration changes and everything, it will try to merge those changes on the fly. But uh, you know when running different patches, there, are, there can be conflicts. So uh, this tool will gracefully handle those conflicts. And if the tool cannot resolve the conflicts, it will report that to you. So you can fix the conflicts and run the tool again, and it will merge those updates. And this tool has the capability of uh, backup and restore as well. So whenever it apply updates, it will take a backup. It will try to merge the configurations and apply updates. If it fails, you can simply revert using the same tool. So uh, anyone uh, who already tried that, we released this tool. Uh, we are not releasing this tool as part of the product yet, but we released this tool uh, for customers uh, as a warm update. Um, anyone who gave a try? All right, so give a shot. Uh, there, there's document. It's, it's a very simple tool with very few options. Uh, you can try that out and uh, give your feedback. We would love to improve this tool, uh, and we want to make this the main delivery channel for updates. And the other thing is WSO2 Manage Cloud Service. Manage Cloud Service is a service that WSO2 will take the responsibility of running DevOps and maintaining your production system. So WSO2 has a dedicated set of engineers that provide this service. And we currently support uh, more than 20 customers, I think. Um, and the team at WSO2, they do the setup. They do monitoring. They do all sorts of operations. They run 24-7 operations. And they can take away this whole burden of running a production setup from you. Any questions? Is there a mic? So this is the end, right? This is the end, right? Um, so back before you talked about uh, the developers having to be able to to intervene on the, on the flow cycle, mm -hmm. so to to be able to understand how to go to do the testing, develop, see how to, everything is deployed and everything. But the question that I have is about: Aren't you afraid that uh, developers are biased to do the testing? Developers are biased. Yes, because they already know what to expect, so they will develop tests knowing what to expect at the end. So normally, would you ask someone else to go make the testings because they will try everything? even the things that the developer is not expecting. So that way, you can make more robust software. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it is true that uh, developers should write tests to some extent. But at the same time, you can write, uh, so developer can write test, basically unit test. That's understandable, right? But if you have a quality assurance team or quality excellence team in your organizations, they can run these tests as well. But the key point here is not who's writing tests, it's write the tests in a way that you can run automatically. That's the key aspect. So whoever runs the, uh, writes the tests, as long as we can plug all those tests 
and execute together in an automated way within a little, with a, with a, like a little flow time. That's what matters in the end of the day, right? OK, thank you. Any other questions? So there's one last thing I want to mention. Uh, uh, the tutorial session that we have today, um, after tea, there we will be demonstrating, we will uh, be demonstrating how to build a pipeline in an effortless way, how to seamlessly, how to effortlessly build a pipeline that incorporates all these seven steps I mentioned. So uh, I would like uh, if you all can uh, participate to that tutorial session, and uh, we will be d demonstrating that. Cool. Thank you very much.